We're here with James. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Local celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. James, tell us a little bit about how everything got started with uh, content because I started seeing you everywhere. People are sharing your videos all over my feed. I'm like, who's over here bringing all this information <laughs> and people are commenting about the new developments happening in the Coachella Valley and things like that. So, um, like, who's James and how did you start doing content? How did everything go? Uh, so I moved out here in 2000 from the LA area, San Fernando, um, was in the restaurant business. So I spent, uh, a good majority of probably over 20 years out here in the restaurant business, managing restaurants. Uh, I bartended, I cooked, I waited tables, um, before jumping into real estate. Uh, but when I moved out here in 2000, there was not a lot of things i think the river in rancho mirage was still under construction oh wow that's way back yeah yeah right yeah so one thing that's always just kind of intrigued me is development you know you see construction fences go up and, and buildings start to get built and it always was like what is that what's what's being built over there what's going in there um and so you know i i did my research you know i have people that i talk to in the different cities and Obviously, the internet is is accessible to everybody, and um, yeah, so I, something that always just intrigued me. So uh, I never was really big on social media until real estate. Uh, then I started posting more. Before it was just pictures of my kids or what I yeah, had just today. family. And, well, I mean, that's how social media started. Yeah, you know, it was your family. Oh, oh, this is what I'm eating for lunch. Exactly, exactly. Now it's like you don't even see pictures that people have to do skits even. Yeah, yeah. The skits always trip me out because you have like someone. In a suit or something, they're just trying to get attention. Some exactly, exactly. <laughs> Social media is a funny thing, but um, yeah. So uh, then I started posting more about you know real estate things, and uh, I found um, that most of the people that follow me could care less, right? Nobody really cared about what house was for sale. You know, if you're not in the market to buy a house or uh, uh, to sell your house, you don't really care about those types of things. So. Um, didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of traction with that. Um, most traction I got was behind my food. Uh, I like to cook. Really passionate about food. I love to go out to eat. So I would spotlight different my favorite restaurants and things like that, and that would get a little traction for me, a little more engagement. Um, it's more relatable because people always want to eat. You know exactly. You only need to buy a house once every thirty years. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, but you got to eat every day. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love food, right? So. Uh, so yeah, that was starting to work for me. Um, but just recently, you know, I decided to, uh, to make a quick video and that was the other thing too, was I never posted my face. It was always pictures of my kids or pictures of the food or, you know, the houses or the something. houses or something, but I was very camera shy. I didn't like to be, you know, I didn't want to be on camera. Yeah. I definitely wasn't making a video. Um, and then it, it, it just kind of. You know, I said, you know, I got to get over that fear. You know, what's the worst that happens? And what led you to getting into the videos? Or, or why Why do you think that you needed to do content or videos to just get more leads? Or, or was the opportunity there? Well, in my business, right, real estate is just relationships. You know, the more people you know, the more people you talk to, the, the more opportunity you have to, to do business and find business. So um, I figured, you know, if I can get in front of more people, if I can find a way to get in front of more people, I feel like people will like me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I said, you know, how do I find a way to get in front of more people? And uh, so I just kind of overcame the fear and started being more consistent on social media. And then um, the video that just recently, last month, uh, is what kind of started it all for me was uh, there's just a ton of development coming to, to North Indio specifically. I live in North Indio. Um, and so, you know, driving around, I was like, oh, look, at there's another shopping center and there's another business yeah. and a new restaurant and all these things. And, uh, and so it, it excites me, right. It excites me that, oh, cool. We're getting a Chick-fil-A, right? Like <laughs> I, I can't wait. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, I just went out there and, and I shot just little clips of the areas that things were getting built. And, uh, and then I figured out the green screen, right. I figured out how to, how to talk with the, the, the green screen the, behind the, you, the yeah. stuff behind me and stuff. So, uh. I made that video and um, it, it took off. It took off. Uh, people were sharing it like crazy and um, people were, were started messaging me and reaching out. And um, 
that that video is is kind of what inspired me to okay this is this is what people want people want people have the same curiosity that i have about what's being built and what's coming to the city and what's going on in the city and so uh i just started i just started doing more so i kind of just dug in and started doing more research now valley-wide about all the different cities the different and, developments yeah and different parking mm -hmm. centers yeah that's it's a lack of information and you 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 fill that gap you know it's yeah. uh it's entertainment, but it's infotainment. Right, so right. yeah, so you people are scrolling no matter what, and that's a like I, social media is whether you're doing business or personal brand, whatever it is, it's, it's you have to be posting. Right. Um, people are scrolling a thousand times a day. Yep. And if you're always showing up in the feed, you know, like sometimes they might not engage or they might see your stuff two days late. Yeah. But as long as you're consistently there, you're subconsciously branding into people's sure memories or I don't know, and then whenever. They're looking for someone to real estate or something that, oh, yeah, well, let me let me go check. Like, yeah. you don't know when you're going to get that sale, but you're building that relationship yeah. by bringing value. So yeah. bringing value is always good. Um, so you also do food content. So the food content is because you, you say you work in the restaurant business and you, you have a passion for food. So you decided to do both types of content because that, that's just like you're following your passion basically right yeah yeah uh i started a uh a foodie friday thing um that i've done it's probably been about a year now it started off with um just making little videos of meals that i would make um well it started off with just pictures of the meals that i made and then it turned into videos of how i was making it um and then i just recently probably in the last six months or so i've been so busy with with real estate and um, you know other things that I, I haven't been in the kitchen as much. Yeah. And so it kind of my Foodie Friday segment has now kind of turned into this is my favorite restaurant, this is my favorite thing menu item on at the restaurant and kind of spotlighting different restaurants and things like that. But I still like to do the the Foodie Friday thing just because you know uh, social media the people that follow you they follow you because you're you and you know I felt like people follow me because I, I love food. I love food. I love to to cook. I love to eat. I love to cook for people, um, and so you know I, I've I've stuck with that one. Yeah, that's a that's a good point because sometimes people get scared of like they don't know what to post, they don't know they don't know where to get started, or like oh if I post something else that's not this, people are not gonna like it, or then but it doesn't matter. Like people are following you. Yeah, you're a person, you know. Yeah. Um. So what advice would you have for somebody who's like? still hasn't started with social media or they're like they're too scared to start or they're they're afraid of what somebody's going to say how do you get over your fear of being in front of the camera just do it just do it i mean people are going to talk anyways right you know uh it, it what, what's what's the worst thing that happens right um nobody's nobody's going to come through the camera nobody's going to come through your phone and, yeah. and do something <laughs> you know who cares what people think who cares what people say um you know, that was my biggest fear was, you know, uh, what are they, what are they going to say about the way I look? What are they going to say about the way I talk? You know, and there's, you know, there's times where I'll, I'll, I'll shoot the video and uh, I'll do it again and again and again because I didn't like the way the, that the it takes, came out. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's just be you, you know, just, just be yourself. Nobody's perfect. Nobody cares. Um, and, and yeah, that's. Really yeah, it. no, everyone's already worried about their own problems. Like they're yeah. worried about how they look that day. Yeah. You know, they're like, yeah. oh man, I didn't do my hair today for work and this and that. Right. So they're watching your video. They're looking for some entertainment or yeah. just to pass time. Yeah. And um, that's the biggest thing is, I don't know. I don't know what it is about projecting yourself on digitally or just at, or like public speaking. I think that's the sure. thing that people are afraid of, right? Yeah. They said that some people are more afraid of public speaking than dying. Right. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. It's true. I mean, yeah. When I was younger too, like, man, I hated public speaking or just even speaking in front of a camera too. Yeah. Um, I used to record back in like 2011. I had a camcorder. It, it was a family camcorder, but we only use it for like people's birthdays. Like our family, okay. like, oh, someone's birthday, we would just record. Right, right. And then I started taking it to high school. And then some, uh, when I went to COD a little bit, well, I would never record myself. It was always like yeah. recording other things yeah. um, for the same reason. But it's like once you jump in, it's just do it. Like you said, yeah. it's yeah. you do it and you learn and you just keep going, just keep going. And it's the reps. It's like learning how to cook. Like maybe you don't know how to cook a certain meal the first time. But now the second time, the third time, that's it. you do it a hundred times now. Oh yeah. People, yeah. Yeah. Now the videos for me are, are, they come really easy. Now it's like, okay, what, 
what content am, am I going to shoot? And then, you know, let me get my notes together, my research, and then let me just do it. And there's and, another thing about uh, content because some people ha have you seen since you started making videos that has led to actual more business or it's just like views or how's like, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of both. Um, I've had, man, my, my, my inbox. I mean, I'm here, right? <laughs> I'm here because I'm here because you reached out. Yeah. I reached out right away. I was you like, know, oh, this is, I, I've had, a, I've had a ton of people reach out, um, either with questions about uh, certain businesses and developments. Uh, I've had businesses, uh, small businesses reach out to me and say, Hey, you know, we want to, we want to get into a, uh, uh, an actual location. We want to find a location. Can you help? Do you have info about this? I've had uh, a couple of people reach out about selling um, uh, land and, and different things. So, uh, I mean, all of this has just happened in the last month. And, um, you know, I've already met a bunch of different people. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet some city council members and speak in, in front of uh, some different um, city meetings and things like that, all because of, of that video. So, That's so sick. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And then what other people have said, like, um, now that, like, it's actually popping off, like, friends and family, are they, like, super supportive? Or oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I knew you were always going to do something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you always got the ones that, that, that got to give you a hard time and make fun of you and whatnot. And then, but everybody's just like, oh, watch out. We got a celebrity, local celebrity. <laughs> it's crazy, though. I mean, now it's like I'm at the store. I mean, I, I'm, at, I'm in Winco probably five times a day, seven days a week, just because I live down the street. And it's like. I'll buy the ingredients that I need, go home, forget that I need one more ingredient. Yeah. So I'm back and forth there. And, you know, people people all the time now are like, hey, I've seen your videos. I love your video. That's so cool. That's sick. It, it's, 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 it's crazy. I never thought, you know, I never thought. But there's just so many people. And then I get text messages all day long saying, my friend saw you. My, my cousin saw you. Everybody's sharing all your stuff. It's everywhere. So, yeah, it's a small valley, too. So everybody knows each other somehow. Yeah, social media is um, it's kind of new, but it's still early. Like we're we're talking about before the episode, like some so many businesses they still don't even post on social media. There was on one restaurant, um, I think it was at the river. They, they said that they're like, oh no, we don't we don't want that kind of customers coming in. And I was and I was like, what do you mean, what kind of customers? Yeah, what, what kind of customers? I know. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, we don't we don't need social media. But it's like, everybody's on social media, no matter the age. Like yeah. everyone's like either TikTok or Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. or Twitter or X, whatever. Yeah. It's, um, we can't escape it. It just became part of people's lives. And I mean, most people, when you're, when you're, when you need something, going out to eat or a, a, a realtor or, you know, something, everybody looks them up. Yeah. Right. Everybody look, types their name in on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube to see, let me see who this person is or what this person's about yeah. before I reach out to that person. So, you know, it's important for me in my line of work, right? Reputation is everything. Word of mouth is everything. So I said, you know, I need a strong, a strong presence on, on social media for when somebody looks me up. I want them to know who I am and see if they want to work with me and whatnot. So. And do you have any plans um, now that it's actually working? Do you like our brainstorming of maybe I'm going to create like some kind of pillar content? Well, you have the food and then the new updates, but... Do you have any projects that you've been thinking about or just working on? Because, like, now that you're in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I we do know. all the time. We're, we're always brainstorming. It's, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I've got some ideas. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about real estate and food. Um, real estate for me, I specialize in working with first-time homebuyers. Because um, I remember what it was like buying my first house and not knowing anything about the process. And then, you know, working in the restaurant business, everybody in the restaurant business is a renter, right? Everybody's working for tips and whatnot. Everybody's yeah. got roommates and, and, and doing their thing. And when you talk about buying a house, most of, most of those people, that demographic is like, I can never own a home. You know, you need perfect credit and you need, you know, a million dollars and you need this and you need that. I can never do it. And so I've, I've been very passionate about, let me, let me share that it's not that hard. You know, there's there's different programs and there's different ways. And so I do a, a first time home buyer presentation um, uh, totally free. I do it at the office. I invite everybody. I make tacos. I give free tacos to everybody because everybody loves food. Yeah. And it's like, hey, it's super casual. There's no pressure. There's no commitment. Come have some dinner, eat some tacos. And let me talk to you about the process of buying a house. No, so like, let's say someone that's listening to this podcast 
they're, they've always wanted to even consider me buying a home. What is um, the first piece of advice or like qualifications that maybe they don't know that they're already pre-qualified or that they're in the right direction? What like some advice you would give to people? First piece of advice is to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Find talk, information. Find find a realtor. Find a lender uh, that you want to work with and and just start asking questions. Um, because you don't know, and, and the myth out there is you need so much money and you need perfect credit. And a lot of people are a lot closer than they think. Um, and it's scary, you know, it's, the, it's most people's largest asset that they'll, that they'll ever buy. Yeah. Um, but talking to somebody first so they can give you some sort of direction and tell you that, hey, you're not this far off, all you need to do is X, Y, and Z, and, and you know, it could be a game changer for them. And so there's a kind of, in those meetings that you do, you yeah. kind of guide people Oh yeah. So if we, someone's we, not ready right now, you give them a plan, a, a plan to mm -hmm. to get ready for that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. If if you want to buy a house and this is where you're at, start working on these two things, and then I check in with those people and, and keep in touch with them to to, to help them. I mean, uh, we just closed on a house uh, on a condo a few weeks ago. I started working with this guy and his family four years ago, and you know they had things to work on and they had things to that, that they need they needed to get together and. We worked on it, put a plan together, and, and made it happen. So, And what do you think of the Valley's um, overall, the real estate market, just because I know um, with inflation and people having to work multiple jobs these days and everything that's going on around the world has yeah. been pretty crazy. Yeah. So, um, well, I feel, I still feel, like, at least the way I see it, like, the Valley just is going to keep growing. We have mm -hmm. Disney development coming. Oh, yeah. Do you have any information on the Disney stuff? Um, there's a lot of information. <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're building homes, it's a resort, they got a lagoon. So I, I don't, they're homes, but it's also like a public resort? Like, I don't, I don't how's that going to work? I, it doesn't make sense. It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot to get into. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a resort um, that you can stay at. Uh, so the amenities at the resort, like the lagoon and the pools and all that stuff, is, uh, is exclusive to the people that are staying there. Um, I believe, and you know, don't quote me on this, I'm not 100% sure, even the people that are living there don't have access to the resort unless they stay at the resort. Oh, okay. So I'm not 100% not sure. Like sections and yeah. the same. I but mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big area. It's a big development. Yeah. It is the largest uh, vacant parcel of land in, uh, in Rancho Mirage, I think in the whole valley, that was left um, to develop, and, and that's the project that came in. There's a lot of people that aren't for it and a lot of people that are excited about it. So, And, I mean, Disney's first home development and they picked the Coachella Valley. That's yeah. that's actually, that tells you a lot about the Valley. Now we got the new Acrisure Arena, yeah. as well as, of course, all the development, like you're talking about in Indio. They're bringing so many restaurants. So, I mean, all those. The, the other side of the freeway over the last 10 years has exploded. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the Valley. I feel like we're still... It's just going to keep growing. There's, there's just no way. It's funny. I talked to a lot of people that were born and raised out here. And a lot of people are like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. There's nothing to do. This place is so boring. And I'm like, this is, people come from all over the world to visit here. Like, there's everything to do here. We got, you know, the music festivals, Coachella Fest, the stagecoach. We have the tennis tournament, the golf tournaments. Now we have the, the arena. There's uh, golfing, the resorts, the casinos. There's so many things to do here. And there's so many... Uh, things that attract people from other parts of the world to come visit. It's, uh, and like you said, it's not stopping. The growth isn't stopping. Yeah, you have the, it's because like when you live here, you, you, you don't take, you take for granted the mountains and sure. the palm trees yeah. and you look outside and it's just, it still feels like a, I always feel, it feels like a small town. We're really spread out, you know, from Palm Springs to the Salt and Sea, it's just like everything's spread out, but. Yeah. The views are still super sick. Like, there's yeah. nothing that could beat it. And I have friends, uh, my cousins, they live in Chicago. So every time they visit, they love it. Like, because the, over there, you know, it's concrete and yeah. that's it. Yeah. And over here, is, they love all the palm trees. They love the mountains. Over there in Chicago, just flat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, I've always been a fan of the valley. Like, oh, I hate it when people would say that, oh, I hate the valley and this and that. But I've always been passionate. Uh, maybe, I don't know, because I, um, I went to a new high school and then I played football. So I was always passionate, like, no, yeah. like the Valley's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then I feel like now, the last few years with all the recent stuff and then how Coachella exploded and all the development, I feel like people are appreciating it a little bit more. Now we got a professional or semi-pro hockey team. 
It's that, crazy how many I people got behind a, that. That yeah. was crazy. Yeah. I never expected that. I know. You see everybody driving around with their flags on the car and everything. Everybody's so passionate about a a, a minor league, you know, a minor league hockey team, <laughs> team in the desert. But yeah, yeah. right. But it, it's crazy how how it just goes to show, and I think that's what's starting to uh, attract all these businesses is that if it's the right thing. Everybody out there's enough people out here to support something like that. I mean, it's a ten thousand seat arena that's packed on a regular basis. On a regular so basis, concert and like the concerts they're bringing, it's they're bringing some pretty big names, and a lot of tours are starting here and then going somewhere else. Like, um, I don't know who's behind the, the arena, but what was like they're really I think it's Live Nation, but they're really investing into oh, yeah. making it like a, a hot spot. Yeah. Totally. Or the coolest spot in the desert. I mean, yeah, they like right, to right. brand it. So, uh, yeah, that Firebirds thing is, it's such a weird but pretty cool thing to see because, like you're saying, a lot of people move here. So, football, you have, you know, all the different fan bases. People are here following their teams from their hometown yeah. and things like that. Um, baseball, any other sport, you know, there's it's just a melting pot. But we finally had something that we all could relate yeah, to. It's like, oh, problem. yeah, that's our team. That's our team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go to Firebird games? I do, I do. I love it. It's a lot of fun. Were you a fan of hockey before that? I wasn't. You I wasn't. Were. I'm a huge sports fan, basketball, football, baseball. Hockey was like the last sport that I would yeah. follow. But um, And I had never been to a game. I had been to one game ever uh, before the arena. And, and yeah, we're there. We're there. We, we catch a couple of games uh, each season so each far. Each season? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I've been to a couple games too. And it's the same thing. Like, I never hockey was not. Yeah. It was kind of like. I mean, it's, I always thought, I always respected it because they're running full speed or skating right. full speed with like right. blades on their feet and they, they can fist <laughs> the coordination with the yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty intense. It's, it's got to be one of the most skillful sports. Definitely. I mean, I, I've never I've only skated once in ice, but okay. I can't imagine if you can even playing a game. Right, like, right. That's... Having the coordination to, to control the puck and all that while you're trying to skate. While you're yeah. trying to skate, yeah. um, and then uh, Coachella Fest too is. Like exploded to like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, the digital because of the, all the live streams that they do, yeah. and then they bring in artists from all over the world now. So it's like people are knowing about the Coachella Valley just in in Asia and all the markets because now the way they select their lineup, it's like twelve artists are from from the K-pop Asia, Japan, yeah. that area. Yeah. You have like twelve artists from Central. Um, there's the Southeast Asia, you have uh, Latin artists, you have Canadian artists, you have artists, of course, from the U.S. majority, the yeah. European artists. So now it's like t tapping into the whole world. Right. Um, Afro beats are also big, so the exposure that the Valley gets. And also the Palm Springs, too, that's um, featured a lot on like TV shows now and oh, yeah. movies. The yeah. new Barbie movie, the whole um, Barbie land was based out of Palm Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the Barbie's house, like the background was Palm Springs, yeah. and they had the one, um, oh, I forgot that movie was called, that was shot in Palm Springs as well. Yeah. Um, there was a movie called Palm Springs, which wasn't shot in Palm Springs. Right, right. But yeah, like that, like the branding is just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah. So. And I, I like that Palm Springs used to be the escape for the, mm -hmm. the actors and mm -hmm. everybody in Hollywood. They would go to Palm Springs in between shoots and stuff. Yeah. Because of the two hour rule or something like that. Yeah. So. That was big. Palm Springs was really big back in the day. And then when I moved out here, and that's part of the reason that I moved out here was, you know, the, the, this guy sold me on it. He's like, Palm Springs, spring break capital of the world. It's this, it's that. And I'm like, okay. And I came out here. This is Palm Springs? This is this is what you're talking about? <laughs> you know, the, I yeah. think back, you know, 2000, the downtown Palm Springs still had the mall, right? That was dying, was all like closed up and everything. And um, you know, you'd walk the, the strip and there wasn't a lot of action. There just wasn't a lot of things to do. And I mean, you look at it now and now the nightlife has returned, right? There's a lot of things to do out there during the day, the, the, the bar scene and the club scene and everything out there, the nightlife has, has really started to take off. The shopping scene is really big out there too. So yeah, yeah it's, um, uh, it's, it's good. good. It's good for, well, there, there's, there's people that complain. There's a lot of people that don't like because it's, yeah. It's raising the prices of everything, you know, like houses start exploding. And then since 2020 as well, like a lot of people started leaving the big city once um, yeah. everything was shut down. They're trying to get away. I mean, you sell your house that's super expensive in Orange County or L.A., yeah. buy a nice home here. Oh, yeah. You know, just all the retirees, of course, with the nice weather. Yeah. Well, you, you look at home prices and everybody says 
and you know they're right home prices are, are, are really high but compared to California this is still one of the most affordable places to live I mean of course places like maybe like Hemet or you know places like that where there's not anything to do but the size of home and the price of home that you're gonna buy out here you couldn't touch in Orange County, San Diego, LA, yeah. Northern California. Like the, the the homes out here that are half a million dollars, seven fifty, those are two million dollar homes in, in, in LA and those areas. So it's still a very affordable place to live and in my experience so far, you know, a lot of first time home buyers are moving out here from those areas because they can't afford those to, areas, to, you know, yeah. for your first house and you gotta make you know, it's a million dollar home to buy your first home. They can come out here and buy that same house for, you know, five hundred, five fifty. So and then it's the unique, like the, the cool experience of like, still feeling like a small town yeah. with all the cool stuff, Disney coming and all the right. biggest festivals in the world and all this. Um, and then uh, what's um, what's other cool developments that people don't know about here in the valley that you're besides the, the one happening in India? Do you have you done research in another one? Uh, the video I just posted yesterday about the, there's the uh, the big Amazon warehouse. Um, going right off the freeway uh, in Desert Hot Springs. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be one of the largest ever built, supposed to be three and a half million square feet. Um, they since downgraded that, 650,000 square feet now. Um, but they just started construction. If you're driving on the freeway, heading out of town, you'll see all the heavy machinery right there, right before Indian Canyon. Okay. Uh, but it's going to bring 1,400 jobs to Desert Hot Springs in the desert, um, which is super cool. Uh, it's going to have the largest solar array, rooftop solar array, um, one of the largest in California. So uh, that's a project. There's there's all sorts of projects. I mean, the, the, the sports complex that's come into to Indio behind Bob's Twin Kitchen. Oh, it's soccer like soccer uh, fields, yeah. baseball field, baseball diamonds, football fields. It's going to be a, a huge thing for people to do, you know, kids to go and, and sports and stuff. Um, the Oasis project that is still under review um, right there off of Monroe in the freeway. It's a lot of people that are against it. What um, is that one? It is supposed to be uh, light industrial warehouses close to the freeway. It's right across the street from Walmart. Yeah. Uh, up against the freeway there. So it's supposed to be industrial up against the freeway. Um, and then it's supposed to be a lot of mixed use retail and um, uh, apartments or uh, residential on top of the retail. So it'll be like stores and stuff on the, on bottom, the bottom and then, and then above will be uh, apartments and stuff. And it's supposed to be a really big project. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, that's exciting. That's great. And then a lot of people are like, no, we don't want warehouses where there's going to be semis and trucks all the time clogging up the, uh, the streets and then, um, you know, uh, apartments and stuff. They're like, you know, it's going to bring a lot more people. It's going to bring a lot of traffic. Um, the big, I think everybody's hot button right now that lives on this side and in Indio and that side as well is the two interchanges, the Jackson, Jackson and, and Monroe. Monroe. All the other ones have been done over the years, and it's like all this development's coming over, but we're still you know, yeah, jam packed on there. Bottlenecks really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, they have projects now. I think they've been talking about re redoing. Monroe is supposed to start, I believe the funding's already there. It's supposed to start construction sometime next year, from last I heard, and then Jackson will be after that. Um, but it's like when that construction starts, we already have, you know, the raising canes and the in and out and all that development going on right there. So it's like, it's bringing a lot of traffic and then the construction will start. So that's just going to be a nightmare. There's going to be another in and out in North India. Yeah. Oh, there you know yeah. Uh, right next to Walmart. So oh, it's a, it's a raising canes. It's an in and out. Um, there's a sumo dog, like the one on uh, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah. Um, that's a nice area too. Jefferson. The, the, yeah. That little the, shopping center there. Yeah. And then we're getting, the Valley's getting the first, it's called Salad and Go. It's, um, when I posted about that, I got a lot of comments from people that have been there. I guess it's like they're in Arizona and Colorado and places like that. And uh, it's a fast food restaurant, but salads. Oh, okay. So, so a, a, a healthy fast food yeah. restaurant. So it'll have a drive through and it's like just salads are on the menu. And I think there's just a bunch of different salad options and stuff. But um, I think it's one of the first in California. And it, it'll be right there off of Monroe. And, 42. That's sick. I never even heard of them. Yeah, me either. Uh, what's, uh, there were, you also mentioned there was potential a movie theater coming through North India, or, or is that... Before, uh, before COVID, it was supposed to be uh, Maya, Maya Cinemas. It was, yeah. uh, it was uh, Latin-owned. I think, I, I believe it was 12 or 14 screens, um, and it was going to go right there next to Walmart. Um, but when COVID hit, 
when everything kind of stopped, last I heard and last I talked to some of the council members, that project's been put on hold. I don't, they're not even sure that it's still going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, the movie industry kind of it, it took a toll because of the COVID and the writer's strike happened at the same yeah. time. So, 2021, 2022 was like the worst years of entertainment. Yeah. Like, it was just bad move. Like, it wasn't even worth it. Yeah. But I feel like this year, entertainment is peak. It's coming back. Yeah. The, the movies are coming out. Um, they feel like big blockbusters, some of them. Well, we have Wolverine and um, Deadpool coming out like in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's going to break all kinds of records. Yeah. And Inside Out 2 broke a bunch of records. And then you have... On TV, yeah, you have the House of Dragon, right. Rings of Power coming back. Right. Yeah, Even in sports, sports, too, because I um, feel like, feel like sports, sports are also, also, those two years were also kind of like a transition coming back. It was it was a little, I mean, for the, they were playing empty stadiums for a while, you know? Yeah. And people are still scared. It took people to go to large events. Even to this day, I know people that would they don't want to go to large events anymore. Right. They, they got freaked out from yeah. just being around people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like we're on the... Coming back to where we were, maybe like 2019, where the entertainment industry is coming back. So movie theaters, like every time I've gone, it's everything sold out already. Like you can't even get seats, and they're doing pretty decent, at least from my personal experience going. Yeah. Um, well, it took a lot um, for La Quinta to finally get their movie theater. Uh, I'm not sure if you knew this, but um, the shopping center in La Quinta that has Red Robin and Stater Brothers yeah. and all that, um, this is probably 15 years ago. Uh, it's a furniture store now, but it was built as a movie theater. It was supposed to be a movie theater. They had signs on 111 that they would have had the names of the movies put in there. If you next time you drive by there, look and you'll see. Like, yeah, that kind of looks, looks like a movie like sign. A yeah. sign. Yeah. And um, it's uh, where the Five Below is being built there right now, right next door to it. Um, that building was supposed to be a movie theater, and they built it. They had the seats in there and everything, and then um, they, I think, the project went bankrupt and they pulled out. And wow. uh, that building sat vacant. Then it became, it's been like three different furniture stores. Um, so, I mean. And furniture then, store, that's like a scam. Like, right. <laughs> how do they even open this? <laughs> right, right. Serious. The money um, laundering or something. I don't know. <laughs> something like that, huh? But, uh, and then they finally got their, their new theater there. But then, you know, the Indio, uh, the Metro, the Metro 8 closed. And so now there's no movie theater on this side of the valley. Oh, they're remodeling, you know, Regal? Um, or something like that? I saw that they're... Uh, Middle of construction. That's what it, I think originally was supposed to be, but as from what I've heard, the rumors as of now, they, they have no plans to reopen. So, oh wow, because yeah. I mean, there was a sign that said, "Yeah, on, on one eleven." The, the I used to go to Metro Eight. That was when I was a kid. You know, that was the spot you go there, right, for the Friday nights and um, the movie, the midnight premieres and stuff. Yeah, like waiting outside. That's what everybody said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the spot back then. But yeah, no, um, I'm excited for just. I, I like to look at things in a positive manner, you know, yeah. like, I feel like everyone, I don't know, people sometimes have negative thoughts when it comes to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are scared of change. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the cool thing. That's, that's the, the videos that I'm making now are, are kind of um, an addiction for me now at this point because, and you know, it's hard to read the comments sometimes because, you know, the comments, but uh, it's cool to read because now I started asking people in the video. Um, what are your thoughts on this project? What do you want to see come to the Valley or what do you want to see come to your city? And so people are all, you know, naming these businesses that they want to see come. And so now I'm responding to the comments and tagging the companies. Uh, you know, I think probably the most popular one right now for Indio, uh, I get hundreds of comments every day now about Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's. Oh, wow. And so uh, I went to Trader Joe's website and they actually have a button there that says request a location. And you can click on it, and it'll say, where do you want to see the next Trader Joe's built? And I typed in there. I said, North Indio. You know, here's a couple locations that I think you know, might work for you. And so now I'm responding to everybody's comments, and they're going, oh, that's a great idea. Have you gone to their website and requested a store? You know, Maybe well, that's if everybody, all these hundreds of people that are saying we want Trader Joe's goes on their website and requests it, maybe they might they take notice, come action. out here, and, and, and do something. So The data, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's your like a, your account's becoming a, the public forum. Yeah, yeah. For like, yeah, that's yeah. that's very cool. You're opening the doors like, you're just a messenger. You're yeah. Just like, oh, here's what's happening. What do you guys want to see? I mean, there's some <laughs> things where people will ask, "Hey, do you know about this?" And I'm like, "I didn't even know about that. Let me go see what I can find out and and go back." Um, you know, the brewery that's opening in um, 
in North India, the Shadow Hills Plaza, mm -hmm. uh, next to Domino's. Um, it came from that video. One of the uh, the owners reached out to me and said, uh, uh, when I named all the things that were coming to North India, he commented and he goes, don't forget about Indio Brewing. And so I commented back and I said, I haven't heard of this. Tell me more. And he, uh, he reached out and he's like, yeah, and told me the whole story. And um, he said, you want to come over and check it out? He's like, the floor is getting poured today. So I oh, went over there, sick. met the guy. He walked me around. He's like, you know, the, the bar is going to be here. We're going to have food trucks back here. And he's telling me about the beers and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, you're going to kill it out here. There's nothing in North Indio. You know, you've got 10,000 homes on this side. And they're all, the majority of the people living on the side are all working families and people. And to have a brewery there, a place to come and, and watch the game and grab a beer and, and hang out. And he's, uh, so he's super excited about it. But you know, that was something that I didn't, wasn't even yeah. on my radar. And he reached out and I'm like, oh, cool. So then I did a video about that. And that one took off. So, you know, it's, 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 it's like yeah, a domino it's, effect. You, I mean, we don't know. Also, the, there's a brewery coming to downtown India, right? Like on. Yeah, the, the Desert Beer Company. Desert Beer Company, their, their yeah. second location. Well, the whole development there is going crazy. Downtown. The new stage, you have uh, the tap house. Every time I drive by, it's full. Back. Victoria's, you have uh, Gabino's. Yeah. It's just Gabinos like is my favorite, everything man. just keeps growing. Yeah. Gabinos is super sick. Yeah. And then there's a place there that not a lot of people know about because it's called the Speakeasy. It's like a... It's like oh, a, yeah. I still haven't, I haven't gone, but I... I, I haven't gone yet either. <laughs> but it's like, there's there's no... It's like hush-hush type. You, you got to like request. Uh-huh. And then uh -huh. they give you a password to get in or something. Like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. But it's like super like high-end steaks and wine and, and, you know, like fine dining in, in downtown India that, you know, we, we went down there for the... Uh, the 4th of July and uh, I was talking to some people and we walked by and I said, did you know what this place is? And I started describing it to them. They're like, what? <laughs> Here in downtown? I was like, yeah, that's a thing. Like, you know, there's lots of things coming. So it's super cool. Um, do you know anything about the project on 48 and uh, Van Buren? The, like where the lighthouse is at? It was like a hotel resort. Then then like the project kind of just died down. Uh, what was it called? Indigo or something like that? The Indigo? Maybe. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, that that was that was a project that they, as far as I know, as of right now, it's it, it, the the developer went bankrupt and and it's dead. Um, I think the hotel resort, not the resort, but the hotel part of it, is from what I know is going to be happening right around the corner from you, right here at Golf Center Plaza. That new. Uh, development where Starbucks and our uh, AMPM is yeah uh, a hotel's going in there and from what I have heard it's going to be that indigo hotel that was supposed to go in that project oh in 48 yeah yeah because uh, that was I remember when they were announcing it it was going to be Coachella's first hotel yeah because the city of Coachella still doesn't have a right. hotel that's right. kind of crazy actually right I mean downtown oh downtown Coachella is a that one transformed the last 10, 10 years. It's been, it's been super sick right it, there. It's funny because, uh, you know, I do the Indio videos and a lot of the comments are in there like, what do you got against Coachella? Like, <laughs> well, you haven't talked about Coachella. So, you know, there's a lot of development coming to Coachella too. You know, they, they, what uh, kind of projects are coming over there? Uh, they got one of the largest gas stations, travel stops under construction um, right now, right, out, right outside the 29 Casino. Um, mm. It's called Shelly's. Um, 59 gas pumps. 59? Uh, 59 gas Damn. pumps. It's insane. Oh, it's going to be like Morongo. Like. Yeah, so something similar to that. But it's one of the largest gas stations in uh, in California. Um, it's like a travel stop um, right there off of uh, Dillon. Yeah. Um, and then the Sunline Transit is building their, uh, building the hub right there on, um, I can't remember the name of that street, but where all those uh, uh, apartments are being built. Um, I think it's uh, Cesar Chavez, maybe right there, like um, grapefruit, modern, yeah, yeah, in that area. But the, it's going to be like a huge bus, Sunline Transit. It's going to have um, you know a bunch of things going on there, um, and then there's a lot of restaurants, little little mom and pop restaurants opening up in there. So I don't know a lot about any big developments coming over there yet. I haven't heard anything, but there's a, there's still a lot of development happening. Yeah, Coachella feels more community like they they don't have a lot of chains it's all yeah any new restaurant it's all like small business right like, right i like that i love that yeah the, the, that's some feel. of the best food is the, the yeah small coachella's pop, coachella's cool they i think they have the best community in the valley like as, as far as like the people you know they're, they they pull up to their events like it's they're, they're doing a good job over oh there. yeah yeah um what about um 
I know that I heard rumors they wanted to do like a train from like the Coachella Valley to LA or something or some some high kind speed, of, yeah, some, high speed, uh, high speed there, rail. That's been yeah, they've been talking about that for years. Um, a ton of funding they're gonna need for that. I think it's a great idea. A lot of people are against it, um, but I mean, to be able to jump on a train and get to like LA in thirty minutes or an hour or whatever, I think. Would or be, even if it's an hour and a half, but you're not. Bumper you're not to driving, yeah, driving yeah, exactly. You worst. just you know you buy the train ticket and jump on the train. I mean the railways are already there, so but I think they're not built for um, for mass transit. Type yeah, thing. so I think that's that's the thing where they'd have to build all new stuff. But they've been talking about that for a while. Um, the other cool project that I really like that I need to do a video on soon is uh, the CV Link. It's the um, it's like a a, a, a bike path. Uh, that goes from Coachella to Palm Springs. You probably saw some of the construction happening under the Jackson Bridge and under the Monroe Bridge going along the wash. Um, but it is... Uh, it's I've seen some machines there, but I don't know what, what it, was happening. So it's a, it's, a, it's a bike path or walking walking path. They said that you can take golf carts on it, so like low, uh, like battery-powered vehicles. Um, but it's mainly for like bikes and people walking and stuff like that. But it's away from the streets and it'll span through every city from Coachella all the way to Palm Springs. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be a fun walk. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> You're going to have to do a video. You're going to have to do a video where you're like, oh, it took me 12 <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Starting in Coachella. I'll check back in with you in. Uh, you got to get picked city. up in Palm Springs. Yeah. I was like, hey, I'm, it's a one way. Pick me up. Exactly. I'm back. I'm over back. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of cool projects out here right now. No, that's exciting. Um, well, I don't know. I I hope everything just keeps going the way it is, and people just appreciate what's happening, you know. And uh, I know it's hard too. Some people are struggling with uh, the inflation and everything. So, um, just gotta hustle up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Networking. It, it's going. it's been great, you know. Everybody, uh, the feedback that I've gotten on all of my videos has been super positive. Everybody's very thankful, like you said, you know, bringing. I'm bringing, I'm filling the gap of, you know, what is that and what's coming. Uh, and I like it. I like it, you know, because if it's something that I don't know, then it, it, it makes me go find and then out. You start find, yeah, and then yeah. you start doing research. Like, yeah. Almost like a, a journalism type of way. Exactly. And exactly. it's fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then where can people find you? Uh, if people want to reach out to you, do you have a website, an Instagram, Facebook? Where, where? All of it. All of it. So my Instagram is uh, my first and last name. Uh, James Sewer Realtor. It's uh, James underscore Sewer underscore Realtor underscore. Um, same thing. Search me up on Facebook. James Sewer Realtor. Um, YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel. Still kind of under construction. Not yeah. a lot of stuff there yet, but uh, I call it Coachella Valley Living. Um, so if you search that or search my name, that should pop up. Uh, and then my website um, is Homemade. That's my branding with real estate. Um, Brought you the the homemade chips and salsas and stuff. Oh yeah, I do. Uh, so at my open houses, I do homemade tacos. Right, I'll bring the grill out. Everybody loves food. Yeah, everybody loves food. So my job when I'm selling a house is to get people to come look at the house. And you know, when I say free tacos, people tend to show up. So <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll do. Uh, so my branding is homemade. So my website is homemade um, dash js my initials uh, dot kw dot com. Okay. Um, but you can you can check out my website there. Find me on any of those social media platforms. Um, I mean, just type my name into Google, and I got all sorts of stuff that pops up now. So, yeah, that feels cool, huh? Just like just keep growing, growing your your name, your brand. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, I, I uh, I'm super passionate about helping people. Uh, I love helping people stop renting and you know start building their wealth and and get into home ownership so they can not have to worry about getting kicked out or the rent being raised or anything like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about the education piece of it. Hey, just give me a call and I'll walk you through what the process looks like. I'll sit down and meet with you. And, you know, people get intimidated by, oh, I don't want to call because he's going to try and sell me something. Yeah. I'm not a salesman. I'm not here to sell anybody anything. I'm here to help. I'm here to teach you and, and, and show you the path on how to get where you want to be. Like, you know, people have reached out and said, hey, I want to, I don't want to buy a house. I want to buy a duplex or a, a small apartment building because I want to. I want to. I want to earn income from you know buying this. And yeah. Well, let's sit down and talk and let's talk let's about it. Just get it going. You know, it's all conversations, and you know, my conversations involve food. So <laughs> if you ever want to reach out, I, chances I, are I'll I, bring some food. You might if you end up 
not being able to get a house, you at least get some food. That's it. And, that's and, it. And good time, you know? <laughs> that's it. At the end of the day, just come hungry. I'll, I'll feed you. I'll feed you. Okay. Yeah. No, James, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on the podcast today. I know it's like sh- such a short notice. You were down and... Um, well, I think we'll we'll have you on in the future too once more things happen and uh, just continue on this journey. Definitely, man. Thanks for having me. This was fun. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Cool.